So today we are working on, we'll start now, standing up. So this class is live but it's going to be put on YouTube for you guys to do it at home and you guys to do it over and over and over. It's a great class. We're going to work on whole body strength and whole body mobility, just moving our body and keeping everything oiled up and strong. Connect into your body and your breath. Try to breathe most of the time in and out through the nose, in yoga, in life. Sometimes at the beginning of the day or the beginning of the yoga, a few slower, deeper breaths, focusing on deep exhalations just to calm everything down. It's always nice to start in a calm state. We're going to be lots of we're going to be doing lots of moving, and you give you can have easier and harder options to all the exercises we'll do. The main instruction is enjoy your body today. Enjoy this yoga class. You're never going to be younger than you are today. So enjoy today. Enjoy this class. Make everything feel good. Okay, we're starting off. You might need. A hand on the wall but we're swinging our right leg and if you want you could have your right hand on the wall if you need that squeeze up your left knee your standing knee lift through your chest reach through the crown of the head and we're loosening up our right hip strengthening up our left hip loosening the lower back core on gently and then swapping swinging your left leg and you could have your left hand on the wall actively lifting through your chest reaching through the crown of the head strengthening the right hip loosening up the left hip and the lower back stimulating blood flow Okay, and then hip abduction, adduction. So if you're using the wall, it's like that, right leg out and across. We can be in the middle of the room and your arms counterbalancing. Try not to look at the floor, look straight ahead at the wall in front of you. So you're keeping that chest lifted because if you look down, your head comes forward. Squeeze up your standing knee. And then we'll do left hip abduct adduct. So it's a little bit of balance and mobility at the same time. But the main benefit is we're moving and we're st stimulating blood flow and lymph. So keeping everything healthy, keeping nutrients to our skin, our joints, our brain, all of our tissues, all of our cells. Good, 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 good. Coming to feet a good even a bit wider than hip width, they can turn out a little bit. Elbows in back pockets with the palms of the hands facing up for shoulder external rotation, so not rounded, and chest lifted. Squeeze in your shoulder blades, so really trying to put the elbows in the back pockets. And then we're going to keep the weight into the base of the big toes, the ankles don't splay out, and raise up our heels. So strengthening our outer ankles, and then we're going into a squat. Exhale, so sit down and then into a heel raise. Inhale and elbows in back pockets, strengthening back, calves, feet, strengthening legs and glutes. Find your own rhythm. So this contraction of the calf and then lengthen the calf is really pushing blood flow through your body. So two minutes of this would be like a sort of 10 to 15 minute moderate walk in your circulation, in your blood flow to your brain, in your lowering your blood sugars, getting blood flow to all your tissues. If you wanted to make it like a, if you want to do this, I'll show you, I'll show you the high impact. That would be like 30 seconds of that would be like a 20 minute moderate walk in your, in your cardiovascular system. So, but mainly just go walking but sometimes it's night it's hot and you don't want to go out walking so you could just do this for a few minutes after a big meal 
and it would be a really good thing to do, especially if you've had a lot of sugars. Okay, next one is a rotation with hip flexion. So that's easier, touching opposite knee is easier. Harder is knee to opposite elbow, but not hunching. Keeping your chest lifted, keeping the reach of the crown of the head, squeeze your belly. I actually don't worry about touching the elbow. I just like to work on that rotation through the spine and the hip flexion. So, so when you do this, you kind of don't get as much rotation. I really want to loosen up my back. Strengthening the front of the body, loosening our back and stimulating blood flow very strongly here. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Stand at the front of your yoga mat, hands on your hips. And we're going to step the right leg back into a little bit of a lunge and the right arm up. I know two of you have broken your toe, Reese. So maybe, yeah, yeah. Okay, but if, if, if you don't have a broken toe, you can step back a bit deeper. Hands on your hips, inhale. Exhale, left leg back, left arm up. So it's a bit of coordination for this one. Find your rhythm. So you exhale, or you could inhale. You could inhale here or exhale here. I'm going to go and exhale to the lunge. Inhale, but sometimes I like to do it the other way. So let's see how the coordination is going today. <laughs> I know. Can't play the music. <laughs> well, I've, I'm recording with my phone, so I can't record and play music. <laughs> so that's, that's the sacrifice you have to make. <laughs> Sorry, next week. <laughs> I know. Sorry. <laughs> Just do balance that one out. Maybe one more, maybe one more on each side. Don't worry too much if you haven't done it perfectly evenly. Okay, and then to standing. And then we're going to do um, side lunge. So face side on. And then you're going to step out like this, so step out and then back into the center and step out, back into the center. Step out to the side. So be a little bit careful of your knees and your pelvic floors and your groins, but you don't want to be too careful because you want to keep your body moving in all directions. Just, and you, can, you can do a tiny little step or it can be a, deep, a deeper step. So everybody doing your best and enjoying it and doesn't have to be hard. Just, just mainly keep moving, stimulating your joints and your bones in all different ways. So do dynamic work, then we're doing a few static holds. Balancing out that one, side lunges. Okay, and back to the standing with good posture, Tadasana. I'll just get it back here, that's good. And then we're gonna do some balance poses. So first one, inhale, reach and then flexing into the right hip. So trying, trying, you might have one hand on the wall, trying to balance with your right knee up towards your chest. And maybe you can bring your knee into your chest, but it's fine if you are just like that or got your foot close to the floor. Try not to look at the floor, look straight ahead. Gripping, straightening, squeezing up through the standing knee. 
One more breath, exhale. And then reaching up, inhale. And then flexing through your left hip and balancing on one leg. So you can have a hand near the wall if you need. You can just have the foot close to the floor or maybe hugging the knee in. Look straight ahead. If you're a bit wobbly, it's your muscles working harder. If you're a bit wobbly, you just need to work on it more. Final exhalation. Feet are good, hip width are a bit wider, elbows in back pockets. Look straight ahead, reach to the crown, don't have your head forward. And then we're going to keep the weight into the base of the big toes and lift our heels up. Try not to let the ankles splay out. So we're strengthening the outer ankle, feet, calves and back muscles. Ten, keep the breath flowing. Three, two, one. 60 seconds, sit down. Try to get your bottom lower and your chest higher. So you're working, it's flexibility, not just strength, flexibility into the ankles, hips, shoulders, spine. 40. 30. Yep, good. Having little breaks is good. 20. Good work. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That was good work there. So next one. Stepping the right leg back and your right. This is easier. Really gentle lunge. I can't feel a stretch and I don't have a broken toe. <laughs> so I'm going to go a bit further. That's a bit stronger for me. I can feel a bit more stretch in my hip flexors. Op optional, right arm up. Optional, both arms up. Optional, looking up. Everybody at your edge. Hold. Ten. Keep breathing. Nine. Eight, seven, six, good. Five, four, three, two, one. Standing. Work on hip extension. Balance into a lunge. Left hip back, left foot back, left hip extending. And then spinal extension, reaching the left arm up, gently. Lifting your chest, optional, both arms up. Optionally, look, look straight ahead is easier. You can look up if you feel like it. Try to keep that front knee quite stable, knee cap facing over middle three toes. Yeah, trying to get a bit of stretch into the, the left hip flexors, the front of the hip. Good, yes. Holly, don't let the knee twist at the front. Yes, that's it, Holly, that's it. Good. One more breath there. Three two, one, back to Tadasana. Options, the next one, you can do very gentle stretch forward or go to the wall, put your hands on the wall. If you feel like downward dog, downward dog. If you feel like something harder, you could do a handstand, half handstand, or maybe a full handstand is an option. So just see what you feel like. Advanced yoga is just do what's right for you today. You can do everything easier and gent more gently. And that's, that's sometimes that's exactly what you need. Really lengthening out your spine. Final few breaths.
And then slowly one more standing pose. Step to the middle of your yoga mat, facing side on. And then step, or if you feel it's safe, jump your feet out wide. And we'll do Virabhadrasana too. So it's a side lunge. Shoulders down. Squeeze in your elbows. That's squeezing in your triceps. Squeezing into your glutes. Rotating your neck. Holding the pose. I'm just going to check alignment. That's, you're not doing it like that. So you've got to get that internal rotation on your back foot, your back hip, to really get the external rotation into the front hip. Yep, yep, that's it. A nice rotation through the neck. So it's strengthening and loosening in your hips at the same time. Yes, very good, 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 good. And turn in the back foot to get that and go wider. Young, young, young hips here, young <laughs> hips here. <laughs> good. That's it, everybody. So you might be feeling your muscles now. Good. You want these muscles to get strong. You want to push them a bit. Okay, and then we'll try to keep your arms there and swap to the other side. Have a break if you need. Holding warrior two. If you're feeling downward pressure in the pelvic floors, you've got to try to lift up or not go as wide because you don't want to aggravate prolapse. You don't want to be going, oh, every time after a yoga class, I, 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 little, I wee my pants a bit the next day. That's called aggravating prolapse. And it's quite common, so you just need to be aware of that. And no one wants to be aggravating prolapse. Very good. Just a little bit longer in warrior two, if your legs don't mind. Hips, yeah. Foot, another foot injury. There's a few foot injuries today. Okay, you can come out of the pose. You can step or jump feet together. Traditional Tadasana with feet touching, just facing the front. The most important standing pose. Not letting your chest, not letting your body go in this direction like a lot of people when they're older. Really work hard all the time on just being more present in your body, keeping your chest lifted, keeping your heavy head in the right place. If your he heavy head, if it's just one inch forward, there's double the downward pressure through the spine, through the organs, through the arches of the feet. So you're just speeding up aging in your joints, degenerative changes. So we all want to slow down aging. So keep your chest lifted and your head up on top of the spine. And then your neck's more relaxed as well. And there's better blood flow to the brain. So that is, that's big. So we're going to come into we're coming down to the floor to do some floor exercises. So reaching halfway if you have a shoulder, sore shoulder, or maybe reaching up, maybe look up. I'm going to bring my feet out a bit wider because it's easier for my back now. Because if you're really flexible, you can keep feet together. Otherwise, feet a bit wider, it's easier to come forward. Taking a few breaths, stretching forward. No overstretching, no force. And then having a look at what I'm doing for easier and harder options. So the middle option is you lift up like this into your side plank. And then you straighten out that leg and then you lower and lift. The, easy, the harder option is full plank with left hip abduction. And the easier is to lie on your side with left hip abduction. So there's three options. Here is the easy one. Middle option. Harder option. So do 30 seconds of this exercise. And you can do a little bit of harder and a little bit of easier as well. I'm checking shoulders down, neck lengthened, top hip forward. So first dynamic, 30 seconds and then a hold. 10 more seconds of lifting and lowering. Top hip forward, top hip, less is more. Little movements, and then hold. Just hold that leg there. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 
two, one. Good technique, everyone. Straight to the other side, opposite muscles. So doing the option that's right for you. So there's the three options. And you can do a little bit of hard, a little bit of easier. So 30 seconds, I'm doing harder. Or middle option, or easy option. I'm checking top hips are forward and the shoulders are down. The length is through the neck. Slowly build up your neck strength. No rush. Slowly, slowly. A little bit of a rush because we don't want to wait too long to get strong. The longer we leave it, the harder it is. Ten more counts of lifting and lowering. Good. Eight. And it's hold. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Hold the head up. Two. Five. Four. Three. Two, one, really good work, everybody. Coming to all fours, and we're going to shoulders down, squeeze your belly a bit, and then reaching right leg back behind you, but don't roll off to the side. Stay in your center, and optional left arm. Inhale, and then flex, knee towards chest, exhale. Keep doing that side, reach, inhale, and flex, exhale. You keep both hands down if you need. I'm just going to check your core is on a bit. You're centered, you're squeak, you're hugging in, not rolling off too much. Just, yep, yep. That's it. That's it. Okay, and then we're just going to hold. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Have a little break. If you're a bit stiff, you might kneel that far, but you're trying to kneel back a little bit more if you can. Just relax for a moment. Relax your body for a few breaths. Before we do the other side of that great exercise that loosens and strengthens at the same time and don't forget as we get older the blood flow and the lymph is getting a bit more stagnant and our tissues are not getting enough oxygen and removing enough waste products so toxins accumulating and age speed, age process speeding up and biological aging cellular aging and we all want to slow it down so these exercises are the best medicine for slowing down aging, biological aging. We'll have a birthday every year, but we can slow down our cellular aging. So let's come to the all fours. So it's more than just keeping our muscles strong. It's the lymph, it's, the, it's, cir it's circulation into our tissues. So it's left leg and optional right arm. <coughs> Extend out, keep your core on and then flex. So your core is ooh, squeezing in the muscles a bit. Squeeze your belly button in a bit. Also your glutes, your shoulder blades, your lower front ribs squeeze in a bit. Just keep going for a little bit, about three more. Extend and flex before we hold. And then we'll hold, maybe both hands down or one hand. That's it. Ten, squeeze the belly, the glutes, the shoulder blade. Five, four, three, two, one. Have a little rest in a kneeling pose. And then standing on your knees, and if you've got a thin mat, just put a bit more padding and a little shoulder stretch, a little finger, a little wrist release, a little shoulder stretch, and just standing on our knees is good for bone density in the kneecaps. So to make it easier, more padding, 
under your knees and also look straight ahead and keep your arms touching your body. It's harder to pull your arms back, it's harder to look up above your head or behind your head. Take a few breaths at your own edge. Not too easy, not too hard. Enjoying your young body today. Good. And then plank pose on your elbows. You can do little twisties to make it harder. Twisty twisties or just hold. You can put your knees down to make it easier. You can hold it for a shorter period. That will make it easier. But once again, you just make it hard enough. Doesn't need to be too hard. Just hard enough that you are feeling you're working on your strength. So some of you will hold for a bit longer than others. Plank pose, hold your head up. No bottoms in the air. <laughs> 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Squeeze your belly here. 4, 3, 2, 1. And then we're on our belly. This one is the most important one for not getting rounded. But if you're not used to this, really gently for your lower back to start with, because um, most people have weak backs. So you just start off really gently, push your pubic bone down, squeeze up your pelvic floor on your belly, and just lift one leg up a little bit. And then that's easier. So some of you stick with that, alternating exhale, lift, and lower. Inhale, exhale, lift. That's nice and gentle. You can have your head down and just keep working on pushing your pubic bone down and that's a posterior tilt which will lengthen your lower back. But when you lift your leg, it's heavy and you're strengthening your back. Squeeze your glutes as well. Some of you are ready for a bit more because you've built up your strength. So you can add on elbows in back pockets. And some of you are ready for double the weight, so both legs together. And that's more load on the lower back, so you're building up to that. And a really hard one is the full pose called Shalabhasana, where you have your upper arms next to your ears and you just hold and lift. And the really, really hard one is squeeze in, feet and hands together and lift. So everybody working your edge. Some of you are just doing easier. Ten more counts. Five, four, three, two, one. And it's good to see you all doing your own thing. We're going to be lying on our back and hugging our knees into our chest. We're having a little break and then we're doing some strengthening up the front, up the belly. The belly, the hip, all the flexors, all the muscles in the front of the body. And if you're not used to these, or your back doesn't feel strong today, then do really light weights. What I'm doing here, toe tap. And that's fine. If you feel like that's enough, the main thing is you're moving. You're stimulating blood flow. You're feeling a few muscles strengthening. But if you feel like... It's just not enough. You need to do it like I would need to do this for five minutes and then I'd probably feel a little bit of deep mass. I'm going to make it a bit harder because we're only going to be doing it for one minute. I'm making it a bit harder here and my head up. I'm making it a bit harder. Scissor kicks, I'm making it a bit harder. So everybody for about 30 more seconds, make it just hard enough for you. You can feel the muscles in the front of the body contracting and working pretty hard. Twenty. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four, three, two, one. We're going to do another strength, abdominal strength exercise. But first, 
we'll have a bit of a break and do windscreen wiper with some shoulder mobility. Have your feet a bit wider than hip width. Just hold your elbows just a touch off the floor and just keep a sharp angle. Uh, a cl close up the angle of the elbow joint so it's, it's less than 90 degrees and you're getting into your shoulder mobility a bit more and then just relax the arms and just do the hips on their own. Okay, so we're going to do a hold. And if you want light weights, I'm doing the light one. That's called 90-90, like that. A bit harder is straight legs, like that. And a bit harder is you lift your head up like a low boat pose. So this is 30 seconds, or at your own edge, squeeze your belly. Twenty. Just one hold today, so make it pretty hard. Ten, nine, eight, seven, Six, five, four, three, two, one. Slowly come back to the windscreen wiper and we'll do counter rotation. So arms reaching across. And then balancing out the windscreen wiper and hugging your knees into your chest. We've got one more strength exercise. We're going to do bridge or variations of bridge, easier or harder. So easier would be rolling bridge that I'm doing up and down. Harder is holding bridge and harder is straight one leg, straight in the other leg. So if, you're, if your back feels stronger, you can do the one leg straight. If your back doesn't feel strong today, keep both feet down or just rolling up and down is the easiest on your lower back. So you can choose what feels right for your back today. Sometimes the easier option is what you, you need. Sometimes the harder option. We'll do 10 more counts of this exercise. Balance it out and come down bone by bone. And then hugging your knees into your chest. So just a few just loosening up exercises. We did a bit of strengthening and loosening up. And then we'll do it just, just loosening up and stretching now. Coming to happy baby. Rocking a little bit. Work on deep spinal and hip flexion. It's really nice after the bridge pose. I won't put the camera on you. <laughs> it's not the best one for the camera. <clears throat> Optional, stay here or go into an actual squat. Ninety percent the camera's on me, so don't be self-conscious because. Um, 
you, if you watch this back, you barely see yourself. So, I mean, you'll be focusing in on you, won't you? Because we're, <laughs> we're most interested in ourselves. <laughs> but no one else is really focusing on you. Sorry. <laughs> like, <clears throat> okay, come to all fours. So the most simple variation of cat-cow is just look forward, inhale, cow, and look at your belly button, exhale. And you can, you can just do that, or you can do a bit more. You can turn your shoulders out and pull on the inhale, squeeze in your shoulder blades. Also, you can tuck your toes under, sit back on the exhale, turn your shoulders in, squeeze your belly. Inhale, pull, extend. Tuck your toes under, flex, push. Really, really get into your spine, flexing and extending, pulling and pushing. Inhaling when you extend. Pulling, exhaling when you flex, pushing. When you flex, really squeeze your belly and tuck your tailbone and chin tuck as well. Okay. And then coming to stay with the all fours and then bring the right leg out like that. And then the right arm up, inhale. And don't catch your fingernail, exhale, push under. Keep moving, reaching up, inhale, find your rhythm, exhale. So it's loosening up really everywhere, hips, Spine, shoulders, neck. It's a really good oiling up this one. Make it feel really good. Reaching back, reaching under. Let's do one more. Come to the all fours. And we're going to reach the right arm up again. And then reach it under and hold. Next exhalation, final exhalation. Come to all fours, ordinary cat cow. And then bring your left leg out, left arm up. Inhale, reach up and back, and then reach down and under on your exhale, and through, reach through. Make it feel really good. Feeling it in a whole lot of joints. Not, not over stretching, just getting gentle tugs, gentle pulls. And <sighs> gentle releases. Do one more. Batch the all fours. Reach the left arm up and then under and hold. <laughs> Thank you.
Next exhalation, final exhalation. Back to all fours. Ordinary cat cow or whatever variation feels good. Cat cow. And then standing on your knees again. And you might need padding under your knees. So you could do, just reach the left arm up easier. Or gate pose with your right leg out. That's a bit stronger, holding gate pose. Getting that nice side stretch. So just, just to your own edge. Next exhalation, final exhalation. Firm through your cord, lift out of the pose. Standing on your knees. Left leg out. Or just, just reach right arm up, that's fine. Or reach left leg out and reach over and side stretch. Make it feel really good. Final exhalation, next exhalation. Lifting your body. Up dog, down dog, or cat cow. Do you know cat cow or up dog, down dog? And then kneeling, stretching forward. So if you're a bit stiffer, maybe that's enough for your ankles and knees, but you're trying to sit right back, bottom back, and then stretch forward. Everybody doing your best. So this pose, it is used as a rest pose, but actually you could make it a vigorous pose. If you wanted to, you could try to touch your bottom to your heels and your chest to the floor at the same time. Uh, and you can really reach your arms and spread your fingers and press down through your shins. Or you could just be very passive. So you can maybe do a little bit active, a little bit, a little bit more passive, so let go a bit. A little bit of both. Yeah, good. And it's flexibility in the ankles, knees, hips and spine. So it's a whole body flexibility exercise. And we take it for granted that when we're younger that we can just kneel and flex our spine. Yeah, just have your feet flat for this, just normal like that. Good. Good. And then sphinx or we'll start with sphinx. Lying on your belly. Gentle extension. Working on gentle extension and preventing the spine getting rounded and try to keep our natural flexibility that we have when we're younger for extension. To make it a bit stronger, knees bent, that's stronger in your back, but you might not, you might not want to make it stronger. Or to make it a bit stronger, cobra. Knees bent's really hard, but you, you know, just take it to your edge. Forget just, if you rush into it, your lower back will tense up. If you slowly build up your flexibility in your spine over time, your lower back will be totally happy to do these positions. No force. Just the sign off your breaths in whatever you're working on here. Looks really good. One more breath, inhale. And then exhale, lift your body out of the pose and come 
to sitting on your bottom. Crossed legs, put your right foot in front. And just practice sitting on your bottom first. With a straight spine and a steady breath in and out through the nose. Nice relaxed belly. So if you're trying to hold your belly in all the time, then your diaphragm muscle doesn't move freely and you're restricting your flow of lymph, your gut, blood. You're restricting, if you're holding your belly in to make yourself look thinner, every breath is restricted and that is just not good for your health. So try to mostly have a relaxed belly, except when you're lifting weights or doing, obviously you're doing lifts and stuff, you're contracting, but right now we're just sitting. So relax belly, diaphragm moving freely, and we breathe in. Try to have quiet, mostly quiet, steady breath in and out through the nose. And then swap to the left foot in front and just sitting for a little bit, trying to have a straight back, trying to have quiet, steady breath and just being connected in the present, connected in ourself. There's a bit of peace in that space, being in the present, connected to a deeper part of ourself. We all like to find a bit of peace. It's harder and harder in the, in the 2020s. And then next stretch is either right foot in front and stretch forward. So you might do that much if you're less flexible. I mean, some people do a bit more. But if that doesn't suit, you can also do this with the right foot on top. So just doing what feels right for your body. And if your hips are a bit stiff, don't worry about it. It's totally fine. You can have a long, meaningful, healthy life with stiff hips, <laughs> but it is good to stretch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is good to stretch. It slows you down, connects into your body, gently moves blood flow towards the area being stretched. I, I feel it gets me, helps me to get into a really deep, relaxed state. And yeah, it's very rejuvenating. I, I have a busy life like a lot of us and, and often stressful. So just, just stretching, slowing down, improving blood flow to the joint being stretched. The lower back, the hip here. One more breath on this leg. And then straightening out your legs lying down or sitting. So you can straighten out sitting, or you can straighten out lying, squeeze up your knees. And then put your left foot on top if you're doing that stretch, or some of you are sitting. So do the other the same on the other side. Some of you are doing that one. Hold and practice those diaphragmatic conscious breaths in and out through the nose. And focus more on the exhales. And that will get you a bit more release physically and mentally. Final exhalation, next exhalation. Good. And then you can be at the wall and put your legs up for a few minutes. Or you can be in the middle of the room.
like I am like that, or shoulder stand. So there's that one, or at the wall with a bolster, or a block, I've got a block, just to get a bit of an inversion, a bit more lift. It's the beginning of the relaxation, conscious relaxation. This is where the benefits really settle in of the practice, the exercises you've done to get the most benefits, whether you're at the, whether you go for a jog, whether you go to the gym and lift some weights, whether you go to an exercise class, um, Pilates, um, yoga is highly intelligent, how at the end of the yoga, you do hard exercises in yoga, and then you just have a little lie down. You put your legs up, then you have a little lie down. That is just hugely more beneficial than just going about your everyday life, like doing your exercise and then going off into your car or going to the shops or going looking at your phone or going having coffee and having a chat or going and doing housework. Actually just stop and it only needs to be, you know, a couple of minutes. It could be three, four, five, 10 minutes. It could just be three minutes at the end of your gym. Every gym should have a little dark room where you go in and lie down for five minutes after you've finished. Or Pilates, when I went to my first Pilates class and you exercised for 45 minutes and then you stopped and went, <coughs> bye. Like, I, I nearly cried, I didn't cry, but I thought, where's the Shavasana? Because I'd only ever done yoga. I was like, what? No, no. I just knew you need to lie down, but now I, now I understand the science is the growth hormone comes right up. And that's what you need to grow more bones and muscles and get blood, blood, better blood flow after cardiovascular exercise and just deep, deep benefits, cascade of huge benefits through your whole, every cell into your mitochondria, into the deep brain into how you feel for the rest of the day, your energy, long-term, your muscles and bone density. And then we'll just line our back for the last few minutes to really soak up that last bit of deeper benefit. And we are gonna do a little breathing exercise while we're here. Naturally, as we get older, people tend to breathe faster. More breaths per minute. Heart rate going, resting heart rate going up. Breathing faster all the time. And more inflammation. Muscles tense. And um, basically, over breathing and, and stiffness in our breath, shallower, faster breathing as we get older is just not good for us. It's just speeding up biological or cellular aging. And we all, we're all in agreement. We all want to slow down aging and stay healthy for as long as possible and youthful. So let's deliberately slow down our breathing. It's a very important exercise. So, and we're gonna do a few little holds. So we're gonna do a bit of box breathing. So slowly breathe in. Hold your breath in. Slowly breathe out through your nose. Hold your breath out. Slowly breathe in through your nose. We all gotta find our own end. So some of you will go Four, 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 four counts, four counts, four counts, four counts. Some people might go five or six or seven or, fi or 15. That would be one breath per minute. Most people, four is, it per is perfect. Just breathe in for four, hold for four, breathe out for four, hold for four. Four steady counts. So that's under four breaths per minute. 
it's huge, a huge benefit. Just one more in, hold, out, hold. Hold for a bit longer on the last one. Hold for a bit longer. And then everybody just normal breathing for a few minutes to finish, but keep your awareness on your breath your natural breath, but your natural breath will be a bit different now at the end of a yoga class. Your cells have got plenty of nutrients, oxygen and nutrients, and actually, actually, you don't need to, your heart doesn't need to work as hard now to get blood flow to the brain, blood flow to your muscles, blood flow to your skin, blood flow to your gut, so actually, Everything's more relaxed, which is good for you. So soak, soak that up. And also when you hold your breath a little bit, your carbon dioxide and nitric oxide come up and that dilates in your blood vessels and also your, your bronchi and your sinuses. So after COVID and head colds and influenza, you can be a bit congested or allergies or asthma. So it's a natural decongestant, a natural vasodilator, which as we get older, we need because our blood vessels are constricting, they're narrowing with age. So to dilate them is incredibly good. Breath holds, cardiovascular exercise, relaxation, saunas, hot baths, dilation. Face softer. Connecting to your whole body, your natural breath. When you're ready, wriggle your toes and fingers, stretch a bit, move a bit. And then it's nice to just bring one knee in and the other knee in, pause. Roll to the right side, pause. Sit up, pause when you're ready. And let's continue with moving our body, looking after our body. 
Uh, it's the permanent resolution, not just the New Year's resolution. <laughs> Enjoying every day more and being more grateful, living in the present, being loving, kind, accepting, tolerant. Anyway, thank you. Thank Thanks. You. Thank you, Jackie. Let's have another good year. Coping in the world we're living in. <laughs> Staying calm. <laughs> Coping with the ageing bodies. Staying mobile. <laughs> What have you got to say, Libby? I <laughs> can't wait to do it all over again tomorrow on YouTube. <laughs> ah, yeah, that's the right thing to say. Commit to the YouTube. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can do this routine again. I will. You can do this every week. I won't do that, but I will. It's, 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 it's all free. Just get on YouTube. This routine. This routine. You. There's 136 videos. 20 minutes. This is an hour. It's a gift. I know. I know. It's work. It's so much work. People should use it. Okay. Um, please become a patron. <laughs> Keep up your yoga. Thank you. Body for stiff people, 20 minutes of stiff people. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>